गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट माई सेल्फ मिली सांखला एंड टूडे अवर सब्जेक्ट डिजाइन ऑफ प्रिस्टेस कॉन्क्रीट स्ट्रक्चर अवर चैप्टर श्योर एंड टॉर्शनल डिजाइन स्ट्रेंथ वी डिस्कस द कम्पोनट ऑफ श्योर एजिस्टेंस ओके नाउ इन दिस फिगर वी कट द सेक्शन ओके एंड वी डिस्कस वेन श्योर स्ट्रेस इज इंड्यूज ओके एट द टाइम वॉट विल द कम्पोनट ऑफ दिस श्योर एजिस्टेंस दैट मीन्स रेजिस्टेंस मीन्स ओपोज ऑफ अवर फोर्सेज component of shear resistance as studied based on internal forces at flexor shear crack okay and forces are shown in following figure here cross section of beam and the beam is subjected to udl load at that time number of notation we study first of all v c z okay that means shear carried by on cracked concrete that means when this v c z is induced in internal forces in our beam at that time the beam is uncracked okay now v a v a that means this portion shear resistance due to aggregate interlock v d v d that means at here v d is the shear resistance due to dual action dual action is occur in our reinforcement vs vs means this portion nearer to vcz that is shear carried by stirrups because we provide stirrups at near the support of our beam that we discuss later on vp vp means this one okay vertical component of prestressing force in inclined tendons here we provide tendons that means prestressing force in our beam and the force that induced is noted at vp now magnitude and the relative value of each component change with increase load when we increase the load the relation between the magnitude and values are changed with respect to load condition okay now we discuss effect of prestressing force on our beam in presence of prestressing force flexor cracking occur at higher load for type 1 and type 2 section the no flexor crack under service load that means in type 1 and type 2 no flexor low of crack under the service load but when we subjected to prestressing force at that time crack flexor crack occur in type 1 type 2 member okay in presence of prestressing force web shear crack also generate under higher load and this shear cracks will be happen at support and flexor crack will be the middle portion of neutral axis with increase in load beyond the cracking load crack generate in similar sequence but flexor shear and web shear cracks are reduced depending on amount of prestressing and profile of tendons that means simply the flexor crack and web shear crack is depend upon the amount of prestressing force and also the alignment of tendons that that is depend upon eccentricity okay effect of prestressing force is explained for beam with concentric effective prestressing force p this pe is passing through neutral axis that means center of beam and this will be act as a concentric eccentric load and this is our udl now we discuss for element 1 for point at neutral axis element 1 there is normal stress due to prestressing force is negative okay look at this when we discuss prestressing force here element 1 is subjected to negative fpe and principal tensile stress sigma 1 is inclined to neutral axis at angle greater than 45 degree now when we it, it deform what will be happen that at that time the sigma 1 that is our principal stress okay and this principal stress may make angle greater than 45 degree with respect to our neutral axis and the combination of shear stress principal compressive stress sigma 2 is inclined to neutral axis at angle much smaller than 45 degree here what happen sigma 1 is make angle alpha that is greater than 45 degree and the sigma 2 that is our principal compressive stress make angle less than 45 degree and this one is the representation of our fpe sigma 1 and sigma 2 with respect to our mohr circle okay 
Now, effect of pistachin force is explained for beam with concentric effective pistachin force P. This one is the repeated figure of earlier one. Okay. Now, here point at neutral axis. This one, this neutral axis, and element one is given here. Element one, there is normal stress due to pistachin force minus F P E because here this one is our compressive force. Principal tensile stress sigma one is inclined to neutral axis at angle of greater than forty five degree, and combination of shear stress, principal compressive stress sigma two is inclined neutral axis that is less than forty five degree. Okay, now in following figure formation of crack for pistachin beam with larger span to depth ratio. That means crack is simply depend upon L by D ratio. Okay, and uniformly distributed load also. Now we discuss this pistachin concrete member with reinforced concrete beam. Here the formation of crack is given. This beam is subjected to concentric uh, pistachin force and also UDL load. After cracking, what happened? Look at this. This one is the middle one is subjected to flexural crack, and here. Nearer to support, this beam is subjected to shear crack. After cracking, presence of pistachin force, length, and crack width of diagonal crack are low. Aggregate interlock and zone of concrete under the compression are larger as compared to non-pistachin beam. Okay, here. Aggregate interlock and zone of concrete under compression are larger as compared to non-pistachin beam under the same load. When our beam is not pistachin, okay, at that time this one is the larger. Shear strength of concrete (VC) increase in presence of pistachin force. This is accounted for expression of VC. That means here the shear force VC is increasing with increase our force that is PE, effective pistachin force. Okay. Now we prevent this crack. We find out what is the shear demand in our beam. Objection of design to provide ultimate resistance for shear that means V U R U that means ultimate R for resistance greater than the shear demand. If our value of V U R is greater than our shear demand under ultimate load V U for simply supported beam presented pistachin beam maximum shear near the support is given by beam theory. Okay, condition is given when we provide the shear reinforcement in our beam. For continuous pistachin beam analysis can be done. Given in table number thirteen, this will here in uh, shear coefficient is given table thirteen IS four five six two hundred. Okay, according to our cross section of beam and uniform lo uh, load and also similar length of span. This one is the condition of shear demand when we provide shear reinforcement in our beam. Now design of steer. Now next we design for stirrups. Design is done for critical section. Okay, when uh, the portion where maximum cracking is occur, deflection is occur, and we we design for this section. Critical section is defined in clause twenty two point six point two in IS four five six two hundred for this shear crack. In general case, face of support is considered as a critical section when reaction at support introduce a compression at end of the beam. Critical section can be selected at distance effective depth from the face of support. That means our end is sub subjected to compressive force. This will be considered as a critical section, and effective depth is selected as a greater of dp or ds. That means both values we find out, and the greater than we selected. Now, what is dp? Dp is the depth of CGS from extreme compressive fiber. And DS is the depth of centroid of non-pistachin steel. Okay, and CGS that means centroid of steel is at higher location near the support. An effective depth will be calculated as DS. To vary the spacing and stirrups along the span, other section may be selected for design. Okay. Now here we provide stirrups in our. Beam along the length.
first close spacing for quarter of span adjusted to the support and wide spacing for half of the span of middle one that means look at this at end of the beam we provide a uh, stirrups that are, are closely to each other and at set center spawn we provide a wide spacing okay because crack will be happen here shear force is maximum at support so we provide stirrups to resist the shear forces at the end of the beam okay now larger beam more variation of spacing may be selected following sketch so the typical variation of spacing stirrups for simply supported beam with respect to span l okay now we discuss transverse reinforcement in our beam with respect to shear design when shear demand that is vu exceed the shear capacity of concrete vc that one is the capacity of concrete vc when shear demand ultimate shear demand vu is increased then our shear capacity of concrete transverse reinforcement in form of stirrups are required and stirrups resist the propagation of diagonal crack what is the important to provide a shear in our beam main purpose of shear is provide to prevent a diagonal crack that will be induced in our beam okay and thus checking the diagonal tension failure and shear tension failure the stirrup resist failure due to shear by several ways okay now for now discuss what is the function of stirrups first stirrup resist part of applied shear okay second the stirrups restrict the growth of diagonal cracks and stirrups counteract widening of crack okay and maintain the aggregate with interlock to certain extent and also prevent the splitting of concrete cover is restrained by stirrups okay and reducing the dowel forces in longitudinal bar this one is the very important functions of stirrups why we provide stirrups okay because ultimate the main aim of stirrups to prevent the diagonal crack and also maintain the interlocking of aggregate okay and also reduce the dowel forces in form of longitudinal bars now after cracking the beam is viewed as a plain truss okay in the top code and the diagonals are made of concrete strut this one is the imagination when we beam is subjected to cracking what will be the geometry of our beam okay it will be look like a plain truss and top code and diagonal are made up of concrete strut bottom code and vertical are made up of steel reinforcement ties based on the truss analogy okay and here we find out area of stirrups asc by sv is equal to vu minus vc 0.87 fy dt now one by one what is sv sv is the spacing of stirrups then dt is the greater of dp or ds okay that is the depth and we selected greater than from dp and ds dp is equal to depth of cgc from extreme compression fiber ds is equal to depth of centroid of non prestressing steel then fy is the yield strut of stirrups and grade of steel for stirrups should be restricted to f f415 or lower that means we select the stirrups that is lower than of f415 okay uh, just now we stop here now next we start with new topic